I went back to my office where I always go to do my best thinking. In the horizontal on my leather sofa. Not my favorite sofa exactly. It had too much sag. But what can you expect when you buy things secondhand? There was no conclusion to my thinking after an hour or two. How could there be? I'd fallen fast asleep. The phone woke me up. Yeah? Larry, this is Trav Rogers. As usual, right in the middle of my dreams. Are you still representing Killer Best? Misrepresenting him. I've so far done nothing for him but spend his money. Why do you ask? Only curiosity. I uh, thought you might be interested in his present whereabouts. Whereabouts? Let me see. It's four in the afternoon. He's toasting himself in his favorite spa. He is not? I give up. He's back where you commenced representing him. In the Southmore Hospital emergency. Not more poison. No. A near cave-in of his head. Near cave-in? A roof cornice narrowly missed him. From being narrowly missed by a roof cornice, you don't go to a hospital. Clever of you. The cornice missed him, but the dagger didn't. Oh, stupid of me. He was knifed two hours ago, a block or so from his residence, while out for an evening stroll. And, uh, Barry. Yeah? Polonius. You won't be visiting him at home for a while. Where will he be? Where he is. In jail. We caught him prowling in the general vicinity where the killer was knifed. In the hospital, some of the starch was out of the killer. He looked scared and trying not to show it. The knife gash on his shoulder and forearm seemed to hurt like the devil, even though the patient tried to grin. I've survived again. That's something to be thankful for. Two strikes. Next time up, somebody's out. See that it isn't me. I'm working in the total dock. You've got Polonius. You accuse him? Uh, no, I didn't actually see the knifer. That cornice that came down on you, uh, tell me more about it. Uh, There's not much to tell. I was out walking at the corner of 78th. Boom, came the cornice. It landed practically at my feet. The dagger came after? Yes, uh, three minutes later. I backtracked. I was one block from home when I got it from behind. The dagger wasn't found. So the police tell me. I'll have the area combed, inch for inch, sewers, cellars, places. You think my attacker might have thrown it away? They generally do. Get caught running, it's evidence against them on the spot. They're red-handed. I did make an outcry. I yelled police. My assailant would be running pell-mell. He no doubt would have ditched the deck. Craig. Yeah? When I'm out of here, put a man on me, day and night. An operative following me around heel and toe. I want protection. In the tombs, Polonius looked like he was on a marathon crying jag. Craig, get me out of here. If you merit it. You don't think I knifed the killer? Didn't you? Why were you prowling in the vicinity where the attack occurred? I... I was following the killer around to see who might attempt to kill him. I, I wanted to insure myself against being made somebody's fall guy. I thought I was to take care of that. Yeah, I know. You... You were representing me, but frankly, Mr. Craig, I had no confidence in you. I see. So I'm a schmo. Please, Mr. Craig, get me out of here. I'm afraid you're in for a while, at least. In? For nothing? Just for walking on a street? Just for climbing up on strange roofs and prying cornices loose. You, you lay that to me? Lie and you'll grow a long beard and stir. And what if, what if I tell the truth? I might intercede for you, get you paroled in my custody. After you've repented in here long enough. I only might, mind you. Okay. I dropped that cornice. You said you were cured. You'd given up seeking revenge. Yeah, I know I said, but there was the killer on a stroll for himself, dressed like an English lord and wearing a fancy vest and spats. My blood got hot. I, I looked at my crummy pants and the cardboard in my shoes. I thought of... How he used chemicals on those boxing gloves once and cost me a chance at the title, let alone this eye here. I, I went up to the roof. It, it was temporary insanity, Mr. Craig. Plead with the judge for me like that. Only temporary insanity. I'm better now. Was Polonius an honest man or a liar? I couldn't swear. 
But one thing was for sure, he was a character. I organized the search for the dagger used on Killer Bess. Look for a dagger in a square mile area, you really know suffering. No luck so far, Barry. It figured to be tough. I've got men in wading boots, sifting sewer slop, men emptying trash cans and poking into cellars. Nice cooperation, Trav. Thanks. Oh, don't be so egotistic. I'm doing this on behalf of the people of the city of New York. Oh, pardon me. The assailant may not have thrown his dagger away. They invariably do. Still. Oh, wait. Here comes Detective Wilson with a look on him that can only mean one thing. Eureka, he's found the dagger. Finding a dagger is one thing. Tracing it to its source is a horse of another breed. After the same 14 men, plus yours truly, got ourselves a cute atrophy of the metatarsals, our aching feet, that is, we gave up canvassing storekeepers. Later, on an idea that didn't seem too bright to me, I tackled Mrs. Killer Best, Mona. Tried tackling, I mean. Mona wasn't home. Her social secretary, a good looker named Candy Joplin, was. Can I help you, Mr. Craig? Yeah. First, uh, where is Madame? Out. Just out? She didn't say where. I've got something here. A dagger. Ever see it? I'm not sure. You think you might have? Uh, yes. In a case in the library, I seem to remember a pair of antique daggers... Let's adjourn to the library. That the case? Yes. Well, what do you know? Here's the twin to the one I brought in. Who owns these daggers? Mr. or Mrs.? I don't think I'm able to answer that. But I think I can be of some help. Please be. The daggers, they're antique. They're antique. Mrs. Best shops for her antiques at the Attic Mart on 3rd Avenue. I've often stopped in there with her. The Attic Mart. Unaccustomed as I am to antique hunting. Uh... Goodbye, doll. At the Attic Mart, a guy who looked more worn out than his merchandise confirmed who purchased the dagger. Yes, I, uh, I have the entry here. Uh, Mrs. Best, a uh, fine lady. You mean a fine customer, don't you? Yes, yes. She's here every week, always to buy. Uh, this uh, this particular dagger, it's a very good specimen of old Persian craftsmanship. I've heard enough. There is perhaps uh, something you would care to be shown? Uh, there is. The door. <laughs> Following A.M., I went back for a tete -a with Mona Best. The lady was still unavailable. The social secretary, Candy Joplin, was on hand. I'm sorry, Mr. Craig. What makes Mrs. Best so scarce around here? Frankly, Mr. Craig, I wonder myself. Suddenly, in the last days, she doesn't confide her itinerary. Mr. Craig. Yes? You're a detective. So I am. What do you want with Mrs. Best? Right now, I want to examine her. I'll give it to you cold. The dagger I matched to one in the library case was the same dagger used on Killer Best. I see. Then you suspect Mrs. Best of attempting his life. Uh-huh. Do you? That is an improper question. Well, do you? Mrs. Best has behaved peculiarly. I've sensed, well, jitters. I... Don't stop now. I wasn't entirely truthful yesterday. I didn't think it properly my business. Your question about Mrs. Best's whereabouts... Be truthful now. Well, the fact is, I saw her packed secretly. It seemed to me two valises... I heard her on the telephone making plane reservations. Where to? Acapulco, Mexico. This was the night before last. Skipped, huh? Attempted murder and flight. You mean that... Mrs. Best is presumably a fugitive from justice. A presumable fugitive from justice, I checked Mona Best's clothes closet. After that, I checked airport records. It proved okay. Item... Mrs. Mona Best, flight 7, 11.45 p.m. Destination, Acapulco, Mexico. I let police headquarters check it from there. Well, Mrs. Mona Best landed in Mexico, all right, Barry? And? And nothing. Beyond the airport, the Mexican police have no information. They can't find hide or hair of Mona Best. She's managed to lose herself nicely since her arrival. I'll keep nudging the Mexican police. Don't bother, though. 
Did you just say don't bother to? That's right. Barry, you stamped into my office. You all but accused Mona Best of attempted murder and guilty flight. You, you, you... Now, don't have a seizure. I said not to bother just now because a shaft of daylight suddenly shone in my head. And the delirium tells you... That Mona Best is not in Mexico. Is not? No. But you traced her to a plane leaving New York. I placed her in a Mexican airport. We only checked the name, Mona Best. Could have been anybody, a stand-in, a proxy, say. Said proxy reassumed her own identity on arriving in Mexico. That's why a Mona Best cannot be found. You've got a notion there. Bet I've got the answer to a cute technique somebody developed to uh, get away with murder. The murder of Mona Best. I reported the purported death of his wife to my skeptical client, Killer Best. Craig, the heat's got you. Mona's as alive as you and I. I don't think so. Moreover, I'm not so sure I can accept Mona as a suspect in these attempts on my life. Right now, I'm not so sure I can either. Except Mona as a suspect, that is. Now you're talking at cross purposes. You said before... To catch your reaction. No, Mona wasn't behind the attempts on you. As a matter of fact, there never were real attempts on your life. Now, look here. You staged them. You poisoned yourself just enough. You stabbed yourself, not too seriously. <laughs> now, why would I hate myself that much? Because you hated your wife more. I won't right now go into your love for her money. You murdered Mona Best. Then you staged phony attempts on your own life to throw suspicion on her. So her absence would be accounted for. So the world would think Mona Best ran away into hiding, a fugitive from justice. You were smart, really brilliant, except for one fatal flaw... Want to know where your trick failed? I can't stop you from talking rot. A fugitive from the police wouldn't make plane reservations in her own name. She'd use an alias. Only thing, you had to have the name of Mona Best on the flight sheet so as to hoodwink the police. You murdered Mona before you staged the so-called attempts on yourself. The social secretary, Candy Joplin, is with you in the scheme. It was she who probably posed as Mona Best on the telephone with me that first time. So was some obliging proxy in with you. I mean, the one who took the plane ride to Acapulco. You sure get girls to cooperate, handsome. Now, the high-voltage question is, where are your wife's remains? In a culvert. Up near our hunting lodge. I didn't kill her, Craig. It was an accident. We were out hunting deer in season. Mona did weird things with camouflage. I shot her accidentally. I was in a panic. I didn't think the truth. Cut. You're confusing me with the jury. Even if you convinced me, I couldn't acquit you. I'm only the guy making the arrest, client. You've been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Screen for Murder, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story titled Murder in Three Acts, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, a blonde, a bookie, and a gentleman of no distinction form a partnership in crime, only to find that the road to the hot seat is paved with bad intentions. Good night, folks. See you next week. The National Broadcasting Company has brought you Barry Craig, confidential investigator starring William Gargan. Featured in the role of Candy was Fran Carlin. This is Don Pardo speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.